It is no longer news that Canada is one of the most attractive destinations in the world for immigrants. And I recently did a video to explain why. In this video, we are going to compare Canada with one of the many countries from which people often migrate to Canada and determine if Canada is actually a better place. Statistically, India, China and the Philippines are the top three countries from which people currently migrate to Canada, but Nigeria is within the top 10. Since I have lived in both countries for some part of my life, I'm able to compare them based on my experiences. The intention of this comparison is to create some awareness while also hoping it comes with enlightenment and entertainment. For this comparison, I would focus on a list of 10 items. I will discuss each item briefly and award a score ranging from 1 to 10, with 1 representing a terrible rating and 10 an excellent rating. So, is Canada really better than Nigeria? Let's try to answer this question by having a conversation. But just after you have hit that subscribe button, you have, right? If this is the first time you are seeing this very cute face of mine, my name is Suleiman Aneru and you are welcome. The first item on our comparison table is crime rates and overall safety. How safe would you feel when you are in Canada versus when you are in Nigeria? Starting with Canada, it has become an established fact that it is one of the safest countries in the world based on expert surveys and individuals publicly sharing their experiences living in Canada. It has one of the lowest crime rates globally with very strict gun and firearm control laws. So the chances you would randomly get shot at in school, in the mall, or on the streets are very slim, unlike in the US for instance. This doesn't mean there are no crimes committed in Canada, like the car thefts that has been happening recently, but people still generally feel safe raising their families in Canada than in most places in the world. For Nigeria, the safety records are not as great. Even though I believe some media reports are often blown out of proportion, we can't overlook some of the reports such as those of kidnapping activities, banditry, and a number of other crimes happening on a scale that are higher than tolerable global averages. For the sake of time, let's go straight to the ratings. I'm going to comfortably award Canada a score of 9 over 10 and a score of 6 to Nigeria when it comes to overall safety. Moving on to the next point, I would like to now look at the healthcare services available in Canada and in Nigeria. Starting with Canada again, I can say that the country has a very good healthcare system but it is definitely not perfect. Basic healthcare is provided free of charge for citizens and permanent residents. But for things not covered under basic healthcare, be ready to pay an exorbitant price. Emergency situations are given urgent attention, but routine hospital appointments or visits for common ailments can take almost the whole day due to what I believe is caused by insufficient doctors. I may be wrong, but that is my assumption. I have also heard that women are horribly discharged after childbirth to create spaces for others. So these nuances and some of these complaints are some of the reasons why people have issues with the Canada health system. In Nigeria, on the other hand, healthcare is not provided free by the government to anyone. It is not as expensive in Nigeria as it is in Canada, but Nigeria's healthcare infrastructure still lags behind. Nigeria has surplus doctors with claims in some quarters that they are some of the very best in the world, but their welfare is is not anywhere near what their Canadian counterparts enjoy. That is why you see Nigerian doctors in virtually everywhere in the world, from Saudi Arabia to Canada, the UK, the US, you find Nigerian trained doctors because they are believed to be one of the very best. There is still the practice of traditional medicine in many parts of Nigeria though, especially in rural areas with very low income for families. But if you ask me where I would rather be in an emergency situation between Nigeria or Canada, I would likely pick Canada over Nigeria. With that, I will give healthcare in Canada a rating of 8 out of 10 and Nigeria a rating of 6 out of 10. For the very next point, 
we'll be looking at the level of infrastructural development in both countries. I think it is important to mention at this point that Canada is classified as a developed nation, while Nigeria is still in the categorization of developing countries. So, to do a fair comparison when it comes to infrastructure, some form of adjustments may be required, and that, again, will come with some form of biases. But anyway, when we start looking at the infrastructure, I would say Canada has a very good and decent road network virtually everywhere in the country even though it's harsh winter isn't really great for its road the country enjoys constant electricity and water is piped to the homes from a central system i can say everything that has to do with infrastructure in canada is in order except for housing and real estate that i think is a lengthy discussion or conversation for another day i think that is one area of infrastructure that people complain about canada for nigeria there exists a lot of infrastructural deficits and there is a big room for improvement remember nigeria is still a developing country electricity is not constant each homeowner is is responsible for providing their own supplementary water and power supply in addition to what the government provides. The roads are sometimes a nightmare and public transport comes with a lot of hassle. On that basis, I'm going with a rating of 9 for Canada and a rating of 6 for Nigeria when it comes to infrastructural development. Now tell me, what do you think? The comment section is open. Let's get your thoughts, guys. As we proceed to this next point, let's take a look at the cost of labor and the rates of unemployment in both countries. Starting with Nigeria this time, the cost of labor is relatively very cheap, but the rate of unemployment is very high. For Canada, the reverse is relatively the case. Cost of labor is extremely high and the unemployment rates are very low. This has advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is that one is more likely to find a decent job in Canada than in Nigeria. But the disadvantage is that it is very expensive to hire people in Canada compared to Nigeria. The fact is, I often hear people say that there are no jobs in Nigeria. But I don't particularly agree even though the statement is valid. It has a lot of validity in it. Personally, I believe Nigeria is a den of opportunities. And if one puts in the right efforts to upskill their craft, there is a lot of money to be made in that country. Hence, I'm giving Nigeria 7 out of 10 here and Canada 9 out of 10. Do you agree? Let's hear your thoughts. For our very next point, let's look at some economic indices associated with the cost of living. How expensive is life in Canada and what is the quality of life one can live in Nigeria? These things are what I often describe and classify as relative concepts because they are largely individual dependent even though they are general standards to measure. Looking at cost of living, I can dare say Canada is many times, many, many, many times more expensive to live in than Nigeria and I'm happy to provide some more contests. In Canada, for instance, the monthly cost of renting a three or four bedroom apartment that probably has only one and in best cases, two bathrooms in a decent upscale neighborhood is around 3,000 to 4,000 Canadian dollars and it can even be more, which roughly converts to about three to five million Naira in Nigeria's currency today. When you move to Nigeria and decide to rent a three or four bedroom apartment in a prime location, all of the rooms will definitely come and suite. And in a worst case scenario, the annual cost would be around 12 million naira which is approximately 12,000 Canadian dollars in a year. Take note, a full year. And also take note that I have said that this is the worst case scenario for prime accommodation in Nigeria. Moving on, in Canada, one has to pay crazy insurance if they have cars. I've heard people paying as high as $400 per month for just one car. How about groceries? Can $100 actually buy enough groceries to prepare a decent meal for a family of four or five, for instance? But if you bring $100 to Nigeria, you are going to feast like a king. There are a lot more examples I can cite when it comes to cost of living in Canada versus cost of living in Nigeria. But my point here is that the cost of living in Canada is very high. But the only problem on the Nigerian side is the low earnings associated with a higher percentage of the population which in turn now makes it look like the low cost of living is still very high to a large population of the Nigerian citizen. On the basis of the conversations and arguments I have presented on this point, I would give Canada a score of 6 
when it comes to cost of living and i'll give nigeria a score of seven when it comes to cost of living for this next point let's quickly take a look at leadership and governance in both countries politics is a conversation i try to avoid discussing publicly for many reasons but this debate between canada and nigeria would not be complete without a quick mention personally i think nigeria and virtually all other countries in africa should have been far better and greater than they currently are if they have had good and visionary leaders since they gained independence the african continent is abundantly blessed with countless mineral resources that the world needs but utilization of the proceeds of these resources have been largely poor and the various countries have not felt the impact of their abundance there are often accusations and counter accusations of corruption against African leaders and Nigeria is not an exception. On the Canadian side, things aren't perfect but they are significantly better. I can say policies are often well thought out with a clear implementation plan but the speed of execution can be sometimes very slow in Canada. So a decision is made or a policy is implemented. It may eventually be implemented but it takes time and things move with snail speed in the Canadian government. That's my personal opinion but I think their policy are always well thought out. Overall, I'm going to go with a rating of 8 out of 10 for Canada and a rating of 5 out of 10 for Nigeria when it comes to leadership and governance. We all want better leaders, we all want better government. So, anyone who is in government who is listening to this, do better. We expect better. For this next point, I believe it will be fair to do a comparison between the social life that exists in Canada versus Nigeria. I'm almost sure that if I don't go into details here, everyone who has experienced life in both countries would have a clear winner in their mind. But I'll still gladly oblige you with an explanation. So, I believe Canada is a largely conservative country where most people are happy to mind their business. This is not a bad thing in itself, but it has its own downsides. You often hear people say that they are bored in Canada due to the absence of some form of social interactions. People easily get bored and sometimes this boredom transits into sadness and depression from what I have heard and what I have read. Moving to Nigeria, practically everyone is a social animal. This on the other hand also has its cons and pros but the pros in my opinion overshadows the cons here. There is never a dull moment in Niger that is what people typically call Nigeria, Ninja. There are parties and events happening almost every other day and you don't even need to know the celebrants for you to attend. Unlike in Canada, that most events are strictly by invitation from the direct celebrants. So if you are not invited, you cannot attend. Also, most people suffer a culture shock when they are invited for events in Canada, like people who move from Nigeria to Canada. And they find out everyone may be responsible for paying their own dining costs unlike in Nigeria where the host provides surplus refreshment for their guests. Still in the social aspect of life, I've heard people say that they struggle more in the dating space in Canada than in Nigeria. I'm not a relationship expert but this has become an open secret. To conclude this point, I'm going to go for a rating of 6 out of 10 for Canada and a rating of 9 out of 10 for Nigeria when it comes to social life. Moving on, I think it is at this point we should talk about the weather of both countries and this is also already a point that it looks like one country will be an outright winner even before an explanation is provided. Canada experiences four weather types every year with summer being the best time to be in Canada and winter not such a great time. Winter in Canada can be very treacherous. It is often very cold with temperatures sometimes reaching minus 40 degrees Celsius Yes, you heard me right, minus 40 degrees Celsius. During this period, people are in multiple layers of clothes and they spend a lot of money heating their homes so that the cold doesn't take them to the great beyond, man. Canada weather is not funny and is not for the faint hearted. The winter comes with a lot of snow and it makes going out sometimes unpleasant because everywhere is just kind of messy and you rather just be indoors. For Nigeria, it is basically sunny and rainy seasons all year round. The sunny season is largely equivalent to the Canadian summer while the rainy season is basically summer on rainy days. <laughs> Temperatures in Nigeria are friendly throughout the year and it makes it nice to carry out 
any type of activity outdoor. If the country was a very serious country, it would have been a global tourist destination today. To award this cause, Canada gets a rating of 5 out of 10 when it comes to weather, while Nigeria gets the first 10 out of 10 rating. As we approach the finish line of this comparison between Nigeria and Canada, let's take a look at something critical for the sustenance of life, and that is food. I'm sure all the food lovers in the building would be happy to listen to this point. So, where can one get better food options? And that variety we often hear is the spice of life. Is it in Canada or in Nigeria? This may sound like a rhetorical question, but I think it's valid. If you want to live anywhere in the world, it is only fair that you know what is available for you to eat. In Nigeria, the food variety is endless. The traditional food from the various ethnic groups are a pain of joy to the taste buds. When we list the various soups and stew options available in Nigeria, one can go for a full month eating different things without repeating a single meal, provided, of course, you can afford it. In Canada, that variety is missing to the best of my knowledge. Burgers and fries are like the signature meals, which in my opinion aren't very healthy options. Eating well in Canada isn't cheap, and if you are a Nigerian who lives in Canada, you know by now that there are African stores everywhere to buy local ingredients for your cooking pleasure but we also know that it will take a very big hit on your wallet because it ain't cheap that being said for the food options and varieties we have i would say canada gets five while nigeria gets nine out of ten for this very point which is by the way the last point but not in any way the least point i would want to compare both countries on the basis of their passports what is the value of the passports that citizens of both countries possess this is something that that is very important for seamless global travel and businesses. The international passport of any country is the pride and identity of its citizens. So, which passport would you rather have? A Canadian passport or a Nigerian passport? This question is actually rhetorical because I can already hear you screaming your answer even before I ask the question. Canada has one of the strongest passports in the world, while Nigeria on the other hand has one of the weakest. You can travel nearly 180 countries visa free or visa on arrival when you hold a Canadian passport. But with your Nigerian passport, you have travel free access to less than 50 countries and that is even an overkill because there are several factors to this that I have deliberately left out of this conversation. There is absolutely no contest when we come to the comparison between the Nigerian and the Canadian passports and for that reason, Canada gets a rating of 10 out of 10 when it comes to value of passports while Nigeria gets a rating of 5 because I am generous. We have come to the point where a final verdict is required. Which country is really the better between Canada and Nigeria? Based on the analysis we have done so far, the total points earned by Nigeria is 68% and the total points earned by Canada is 74%. It is quite surprising that the point difference isn't as much as anyone would have expected. But do note that these are relative concepts and if another person was asked to discuss these same points, the results may have been significantly different, skewed in either one direction or the other. With that being said, the winner of this contest is Canada with a slight margin. So tell me guys, is this margin sufficient enough to make you consider relocating to Canada? For those of you already in Canada, are you inspired to move to Nigeria after seeing the areas that Nigeria trumps Canada? Let's keep the conversation going. Tell me in the comments, what do you really think? Now, do I still need to remind you how important it is to subscribe at this point? I should? Okay, okay. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notifications, like this video and share it with your friends. It is the one way you can keep supporting me to tell stories and bring you more videos. Thank you very much for watching and I truly hope that this video has brought you some value. Till I see you in the very next video, it is peace and lots of love. Catch ya. See you later, guys.